So here I am. I'm now a caravan captain flying between Malino and San Marinda, which at 1 hour and 40 minutes is the longest scheduled flight in the Suzier network. My first officer on this flight is Tiago, a Portuguese pilot who's been with the company for less than a month. The weather is fine, aside from a few low level stratus clouds, everything is clear. There's no other traffic nearby. And unlike most of the other routes which we fly, the train is as flat as a pancake. So what could possibly go wrong? Approximately one hour into our flight, I feel someone tapping on my right shoulder. I look around. Over the noise of the engine, a passenger sitting in the front row frantically points at another passenger sitting on the row behind him. Twisting my neck as far as I can, I take a brief glance at the passenger in question. His eyes have rolled back, he's foaming at the mouth and he's having uncontrollable convulsions. He's repeatedly banging the back of his head against the headrest. The other passengers are screaming. Rather than assist him, they cover their faces to mask the reality of what is going on. They turn their backs on him as if he is a leper, scared that they may be infected with his illness. From the left hand seat, I unsecure my shoulder harnesses so that I can turn around and get a better look at what's going on. I look into the passenger's face. I can now see why the other passengers are so scared. It looks like he's been possessed by Satan himself. With his eyes rolled back and white froth streaming out from his mouth, he violently jerks back and forth. It's like something out of The Exorcist. A few seconds later, after the initial shock which interrupted our previously quiet and mundane flight, I realise that he's having an epileptic fit. Quite possibly triggered from the low level sunlight of the morning being flickered from the rotating propeller in front of us. The only passengers who appear to give a damn about this poor guy is the front row passenger who got my attention and the passenger sitting immediately next to him who is now trying in vain to stop the epileptic victim from moving abruptly back and forth. Everyone else keeps the distance. I look at Tiago. He looks back at me. I know exactly what he's about to ask so I just nod. Tiago unstraps himself and precariously shuffles through the narrow aisle to assist the passenger. However, Tiago, like myself and the other passengers, is not a medical professional. After realising that there's nothing that he can do, he quickly shuffles back towards the flight deck. Yep, we have a medical emergency. We need to get this guy safely on the ground, and soon. From my very limited knowledge of first aid, I know that most of the time people who suffer from epilepsy can have these fits on a regular basis and usually there are no serious effects providing that they don't bang their head. But that's most of the time. We don't know this guy. For all we know, this is his first fit and there's still a possible risk that he could die, which is sometimes the case with acute epileptic fits. I take a look at the multifunction display of the aircraft, which displays our position on the GPS. I look for airports nearby. Our destination, San Marinda, is just over 45 minutes away. However, we have another reasonably large airport called Calamaru, around 15 minutes away, although neither one of us are familiar with that airport. Now you see those epaulets which pilots wear on their shoulders. What do you think those gold bars actually mean? Why is it that a first officer always has two or three bars, whereas a captain always has four? Those gold bars don't represent so much of rank as they do the burden of responsibility. The guy with the four bars needs to make the final decision and live with the consequences of that decision. Those gold bars represent the weight upon the pilot's shoulders. If you make the wrong decision, people can die. That's the harsh reality of it. Especially when flying a small, low altitude aircraft in Indonesia. So before I go any further with my story, I'd like you to take a moment to decide what you would do in this situation. 
Would you A. Continue flying to our destination, Samarinda, which is a reasonably large city where we know that there'll be a half decent hospital? The flight time is just over 45 minutes. Or B. Divert to Kalamaru. We know that the airport is reasonably large, however, that's about it. We've never been to the airport before, let alone the city. However, the flight time is around 15 minutes. The passenger in question is still foaming at the mouth and violently convulsing, so don't take too long to decide your answer. I want you to choose your answer as if someone else's life depended on it. That's what myself and Tiago needed to do. And when I say myself and Tiago, what I mean to say is that we both discussed it, however it was me, the guy with four bars on each shoulder, who needed to make that final decision, and subsequently live with the consequences. I'll come back to this story later on in this book. <laughs>